Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the greatest podcast in the history of the world. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week under a banner of hope and friendliness and a new logo, it's Ian Gibson. Hi, I spent a lot of money on this, and you should too. (laughs) Another man who likes to spend money, Kyle Bailey. I do. The shirt, it's it's okay. It's a good, it's it's an okay shirt. But the (laughs) The logo logo is the good part. (laughs) Look, look, give us your money and give us your body for advertising. That's all we're asking. Yeah, we want your body. We want to tattoo on, we want to tattoo on your body. Uh, Look, I will, I will say this. I need to be very, very clear about something. This is just the beginning. From now on, we all need to be super vigilant for any stupid shirt or hat ideas. Because <laughs> yes. I know that from subpixel content, we can make some very stupid things. So be alert. Be aware. All of We're going to have some new merch coming. All of my sentences going forward are going to be shirt ideas. Shirt ideas. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite is... Um, is there's a podcast i think it was on comedy bang bang and for some reason there was this stretch where they couldn't stop talking about teenage mutant ninja turtles like it just randomly came up in every episode (laughs) and anyways they came up with this shirt idea and it's it's um it's uh it's not is it shredder who's the um who's their the mentor yeah shredder yeah yeah. splinters splinters the mentor yeah, no, so it's Splinter. It's Splinter. It's a cartoon of Splinter, and he's standing there in a bathrobe, and then above it, it just says, the future is female. <laughs> and what it's such a... St- it's just such a stupid shirt. It doesn't mean anything, but they were like, shirt idea, and they threw it out there. And I think last <laughs> night, or the other night, somebody somebody got caught on uh, WWE on the TV broadcast wearing that shirt. <laughs> it's just <laughs> such a, a very stupid shirt. So look forward to a lot more merch like that coming from us. I'm excited. My, I think my favorite thing about the rebrand today is I posted it in the Save Data self-promotion, and Chris uh, of Save Data replied, man, I'd buy that that logo on a shirt. And I immediately replied to him with a link. Oh, to the you Red can. Bowl. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> um, another shout out. Uh, Kyle made that wonderful new uh, stream intro. Hell yeah. Thanks to the ever loving and uh, I can't think of more compliments. Ever, ever loving ever present? and I must say delicious, which doesn't really make <laughs> sense, but it's a word that's on my mind. Uh, help uh, from Halucha, Saint, our patron Saint Halucha. Who uh, picks out mm-hmm. all of those and puts them in the Halucha sponsored channel for stream clips? So thank you so much uh, for doing that. You made Kyle's life way easier uh, when I, he started only, this morning putting it together. The only <laughs> yes, I, I started two two hours ago when I was driving in Princeton. Um, no, the only clip that I made was the one of myself playing Poppy Playtime and freaking out. That was the oh, that only was one that one. I actually did. Um, all pretty much all the other ones I had gotten from the extra life recording that we did and then everything outside of that which is at least 50 percent, was from halucha so thank you saint halucha for doing that you are the best and i love you and please continue to do that yeah it's like it's annoying that's that twitch deletes vods i mean it makes sense that they do that but um the fact that they keep the stream clips is great because pretty much anyone can go back and check it out um So yeah, folks, uh, we have re uh, well rebranded. I guess is the word. New logo, new us, new fun time, new owner, new owner. We've been embraced. We've been embraced. We, we, yeah. we live, laugh, loved our way to the retro seventies and eighties. Yeah, we're yes. starting to spack. Yeah, <laughs> it's all the rage now. Yeah, we're doing cocaine. Uh, yeah. Oh man, it's back. a lot. We invested in Apple and IBM. We sp- <laughs> we spice it with organic fentanyl. <laughs> Only the best. Oh, man. Um, anyways, Gluten folks, free. first we got to talk, uh, before we get to the news, we got to talk about all the video games we've been playing this week, and I'm going first because I'm better than both of you. Um, I played a lot of games this week, um, and I will cover them thusly. Two Point Campus released on uh, PC Game Pass, Xbox. I don't know if it's on Xbox Game Pass. I think just PC Game Pass. Um, PC Xbox Game Pass? Pass Game Xbox Pass. Uh, so anyways, I was playing that. Um, it's fun. It's what it is. It is not my game. I don't want to play it anymore. Um, but it is, if that is your thing, I bet that, oh, I bet that's great. 
I bet you love that. You out there. I had a I had a very similar experience with Two Point Hospital. I played it for an hour and I was like, this is a great one of those games, but it's not scratching the itch for me. Yeah. Um, Offworld Trading Col- Colony Company uh, also hit Game Pass. That I downloaded. Th- the tutorials are so much fun. They introduce you to each faction. You go through them. They teach you how to play the game, all that sort of stuff. So basically what you're doing um, is you are landing near colonies that are on, I think it's IO or Europa, one of those. And you are basically putting down uh, land claims. So you're like trying to get your water and your aluminum and sodium. And depending on what uh, like company you are, so there's scrappers, scientists, um Mm -hmm. can't think of the other ones you have like different ways so like scrappers use cheap iron uh to make their stuff versus the other people have to get have to get iron and something else to make steel or iron and carbon to make steel in order to build so uh as you play uh you level up your base as you level up your base you get more land claims etc etc it's really fun i had a lot of fun in tutorials because i was like taking my time doing stuff it's nicely paced um, the actual game, uh, there are four of you, you and three AI who spawn at the exact same time. And it's basically a Starcraft race. So you are just oh. trying to place your stuff and upgrade your thing, level up your thing, do all the stuff, cancel, like use hacking on the other people, cancel out their stuff, hide your stuff, blah, 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 blah to try and win. They had a really cool system, this is going back to this tutorial, where you can buy stock in the other companies. You can actually buy out the companies, and then they become a subsidiary that the player still Ooh. runs. Pretty and cool. you can also um, you can also cause fake shortages and then kick the price up of something. So all the prices on the side, if you don't have something currently mining it, you can buy it. And as you buy it, the price goes down. As you sell it, or as you buy it, the price goes up. As you sell it, the price goes down. And all of that changes all the time. All of these systems are so cool, and I love them. But the actual game is so anxiety-inducing. And I restarted a skirmish four times because I, like, I... I I would get there and I would run out of land claims and then I'm just waiting and all of the other AIs are going level up base, level up base. And then like, I'm sitting there at level one and they're at like level five and I'm on the third lowest difficulty. And I'm like, what is going on? Um, so I think that was the one fault of the tutorial is it did not show any of like, none of that surfaced as I was playing through the tutorial. And that was kind of frustrating. Again, Go play that tutorial. It's on Game Pass. It's really fun. Uh, I think that does, game's great. Does it at least like give you levers to like like you mentioned AI difficulty? Are there are there other ways that you can kind of just say, hey, let's take it easy? Can I you set so. like AI style? Like, you know, whether they are turtle or aggressive? Yeah. I, I I think I was like, I bet if I played out those matches, they would have been a little bit more competitive, but it was just giving me so much like rushing vibes that I was like, uh but um yeah. there were at least like like with civilization and age of empires or whatever, there were like 10 difficulty ranges. Um, mm-hmm. and I think I was on the third or fourth up. Um, so there was a lot of that stuff. I, I would give it a second chance, uh, but I just don't think like that is not the game I want. I just want to sit there and like build out a colony. And I think yeah. that would be fun. So that was kind of like sucked having that happen. Cause I was really into the aesthetic and everything they were doing. Uh, and then I, I kind of fell off there. Uh, but uh, that was Offworld Trading Company. Uh, Farthest Frontier, I will briefly touch on it. It is a banished. If you know what that is, you know what that is. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're building a city, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you are, are outcasts from society. You have left to go start a new uh, village somewhere, and you slowly build up the city. I haven't played that much time into it. I literally went into early access. I heard Vinny talk about it on Next Lander. Uh, who uh, didn't reference Banished at all, so I wonder if he's ever even played Banished, um, which is wild to Although, me. Although, Banished is eight years old, though. Yeah, that's true. So, uh, And then a couple of the reviewers uh, were like, hey, this game's great. Uh, there's some issues with it, but like overall, it's fantastic. It's basically they took Banished, and there is a fan mod edition for Banished that is so complicated that there's actually no full extensive guides for it because they tell you just to play it. 
Uh, and someone's like, yeah. it's if they took that and that and put it into a whole new game. Uh, it's in early access, $30. I played maybe two hours, um, and I I finished that session. I was like, I need it like a Saturday. I need like a winter's Saturday with a mug of hot chocolate to just play this game. Um, so highly day. recommend that. Uh, next up, Arcade Paradise. This game I played on stream on Tuesday. Uh, was a terrible mistake because it is very much a laid back podcast game. Uh, you're running a laundry mat that your father put you in charge of. You discover some arcade machines in the back, uh, and you're like, "Hey, these arcade machines make way more money than the laundry mat does." So you start buying arcade machines and setting them up, and then you have to. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. you're running around trying to do laundry, um, and then while the laundry's running, you can go play the the arcade games. The computer in the office has the maze windows. Uh, thing running screensaver thing yes yeah. it's so good um, I love that. the arcade games you can play all of them uh, my oh. current favorite is GTA Pac-Man where it is literally Pac-Man shoot but it's the top down GTA 1 and 2 and so you're like uh -huh. driving on in like like in the oh, cop cars so with the ghosts cool. um there was another one that was kind of like those Candy Crush ones where you're earning stars. There was another one called Stack Overflow where you're trying to stack boxes. Um, <laughs> there's an ice hockey one. And there was something else. But anyways, yeah. so as you're leveling up, you are buying. You, I just got a quest where I can buy another room to the place and put in some arcade machines. Uh, it's fun. It's The story's kind of neat. You're like this 19-year-old kid that your father like wants you to learn how to run a business, which I don't know why this 19-year-old's running a laundromat by himself. Um, also, <laughs> I don't know what laundromat does your laundry for you. Um, There's laundromats that do but that. But like, that's a dry ones. cleaner, right? No. I mean, how that's far... how I survived in college because my dorm basically didn't have working yeah, laundry. So I feel like it, it just was... That was like the one thing I was like, this isn't realistic. Um, but uh, it's super fun. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, I think I'm going to keep playing that. Uh, there's a guy at work who's been playing it. Oh, actually, Gabe was on this podcast. Gabe from uh, work was uh, playing it a bunch, and we were chatting about it today, and he kind of got me excited to go back in. So, Man, Another that recommend. reminds me something that Maggie said to me a couple months ago, and I had to restrain myself. Uh -oh. She said, you know, it'd be fun if we had like a pinball machine. And I was like, don't you say that to me because I will go buy one. She goes, they're like an arcade cabinet. And I was like, stop it because I will go do it because I have looked at arcades on Facebook Marketplace. I've looked at the plans to make your own. I'm like, I could just maim the shit out of this and have like a four player. I could I could do this. And and one day, maybe. But it's also one of those things where 99 percent of my enjoyment would be building it. And then as soon yep. as it's built, I would barely play it and it would sit there. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe that's worth it in the end. I thought about doing, um, I saw a really cool idea, which is it's basically a wall mounted one. So it's just yes. like a thin top half and it mounts against the wall. So it doesn't take up any space, but you still get the full experience and all the customization and stuff. Fuck, maybe I'll do that. I got too many projects. Moving on, moving on. What's this next game? Yeah, too many. Uh, speaking of too many projects, um, Fallout New Vegas. I have been playing, enjoying. I'm on the DLC. I have a little game to play with you guys, uh, and Woo! it's something I noticed. Uh, and it's 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 driving me crazy because I looked at. I think I think people are being silenced because I looked this up on the internet and zero replies. YouTube video removed, and I'm just wondering. If I've stumbled onto something and tomorrow you won't even okay. know who I am. Okay. Before we play the game, though, I'm pretty sure we didn't hear the intro music. You did not I hear the intro music. I, I, I certainly did not. Okay. You'll hear it because okay. the one thing I didn't check was the thing that I never check. So, uh, well, let me play something that you definitely will be able to hear. Oh, yep. I'm in. Yeah. That guy's just always here. Okay. <laughs> Man. I, never mind. Can okay. I'm going to play this. Guy's in the back of the club. Every time he plays his <laughs> banger, he just says that from the back. I'm going to play this music, and you're going to tell me what game it's from. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is it New Vegas? Uh, Among Us? Okay. Kyle got it. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna play something else and tell me what tell me what video game this is from. <laughs> I see it. I I hear it. I hundred percent hear it. Hit me hit me with it again. It's there. It's hundred percent there. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sue him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sue him. Yeah. Sue yeah. him. It's like I the same tone. It. It's just stretched. Yeah. Because like, I, I look, was... I, I, you ever like you ever have those like music lawsuits where they're just like this song is that song, and some like literally half the time you listen to it, and you're just like, no, those are different. Those are pretty yeah. different. And it's just like the jury found him guilty. It's like what the fuck? That would one hundred percent win <laughs> in a court of law. I like. Who do I tell? <laughs> <laughs> I like... <laughs> Todd, Todd, just scream man. it. <laughs> Honestly, look, we've been talking about video ideas. You should just make like a three and a half minute, like unhinged conspiracy theory, <laughs> trying to like link this together. Yeah. Like Pepe Silva, Sylvia, 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 Pepe. Pepe Sylvia. Um, Pepe anyways, Pepe. those are the, those are the um, I went, uh, sorry, just to explain some more in Fallout. I went to the old blues DLC, which is something I never played. Uh, and, I'm having an absolute blast with that. What's 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 that? I never played that one. So you go to this like you wake up, your brain's been removed and you have a new spine and a new heart uh, and you can somehow still walk around and stuff. And all of these computers with faces uh, talk to you and they're like, hey, this is the big mountain or big uh, letter MT, the big empty, which is very funny. Um and they're like, hey, we're these doctors and we run this place and we're all super smart and really fucking annoying. But Dr. Mobius is evil and he was one of us Mobius. and he left and he went to the Forbidden Zone and now he's lobotomizing all these people and sending lobotomites and robots and stuff and we need you to go defeat him and it's this kind of weird, trippy, 50s B-movie sort of thing. Um, it's that neat. sounds cool. It's definitely meant for people who have beaten the game and are loading back into fallout new vegas even though the level cap is a requirement is only level 15 because i'm getting so much crap and leveling up so fast in this new area mm -hmm. that i'm just like i'm okay with this um and it, it's weird even in, the thing i like about fallout new vegas and i feel like a lot of people like is the main story of new vegas isn't some like clear thing that you're doing you're just living your life yes. and talking to people so you don't feel yes. pressure to be like oh, i'm missing out on the main story um and i think that's really cool and i think i mean obviously that's why it's so high on so many rpg lists um mm -hmm. so i've just been walking around doing stuff and this is more of that i'm just walking around and discovering things and i can't tell you how many times i have discovered a quest halfway through it when i look at look it up and the game handles it perfectly like yeah. I'm not scared in this game to go to places that aren't like locked on my map to be like, go here because I know something will work out. It'll update a thing and I'll, it's perfect. I love it. Uh, it's, it's a great game. Um, so I'll, still having a blast with it. And, I, um, uh, I'm going to continue my crusade of, I think you are slowly realizing subconsciously that, Bethesda games are kind of kind of mediocre. They're unique but mediocre. I, and I when you give it when you give that same exact format to a better studio, they do something a lot better with it. Right. I feel like Bethesda's good at making uh launching pads for other companies to make better games. Uh um, Yeah. And I feel yeah, like I of that. that, I think Obsidian is the best at making games with other people's IPs, like Kotor 2, uh yeah. Fallout New Vegas, um the other ones they've done they, they they have the basic structure and now they vastly improve it yeah. yeah which is which is funny because the outer worlds was like a bethesda game yeah but originally and i didn't like it like i never finished it yeah and outer I, worlds, I, I i've played it's, it's, so many times through yeah. kotor and like it's it's a bit more proof of concept yeah um yeah. so it is a little bit limited in scope but i i do think it as a proof of concept it it shows that they are capable of making a better fall oh. like they did with new Vegas. Yeah. yeah. Anytime I see um, RPG people talking about outer worlds, it's always in, I love outer worlds. It's, it's not a perfect game, but I'm excited for what obsidian does next. And like yeah. everyone calls yeah. it a proof of concept because literally uh, like, I don't know if you were on the episode, Kyle, but when I played the two DLCs for outer worlds, 
They mm-hmm. were bigger and more well written and more co- more coherent than the main just outer worlds game. I like I had that such a better be, time in them. That might be one of the the games that I need to go back and finish because I really I I played I think it was like fifteen hours like ten to fifteen hours and I was like I'm just not into this like I just I couldn't yeah. I could not yeah. get into it. Um, we, we've been here before was, with me and I, my yeah. best suggestion is if you're gonna replay that or if you're gonna go finish that game load in get to where you can play those dlcs mm-hmm. uh and just play and those just two play dlcs those. like okay. that ending is not satisfying at all it is just like a cookie cutter thing but those two DLC- dlcs i had a blast with yeah all right They're like full games on their own i'll try it uh moving on ian gibson hi i would like to I... hear what you have played oh you're ready to go I... I'm on the cutting edge of gaming over here. After 23 minutes of talking about RimWorld, it's time to talk about some real games. I played two games that were released, uh, yeah, in the past week. First one, Cult of Lamb, which I believe came out last Tuesday, Cult of the Lamb. Um, This is an indie game. I believe it's from Devolver Digital. That was in their press conference. Um... This is a roguelite meets management sim, which is kind of a weird way of putting it. But basically, you're a little lamb and you're making runs into a dungeon and going through rooms and fighting people. It's not quite top down. It's got a little bit of a tilt to it, but you're basically running around doing melee combat and stuff and doing it's not called magic. It's called curses, but doing little special attacks and stuff. And that gets you resources and that gets you through to like bosses and stuff. Um, But honestly, the big the big chewy part of this game is outside of the dungeon you are a cult master you're a cult leader you have a cult and you have followers which means you need to feed them you need to provide them a place for shelter you need to give them jobs so that they can uh chop wood for you or mine stone or pray at your altar which gives you devotion which unlocks certain things or you go to a or you build a chapel which allows you to, to give sermons which gives you faith which unlocks certain things uh, including rituals, which you can then do rituals like sacrifice somebody or dance around the bonfire or Ooh. declare a holy day. And that uh, basically alters the faith, which is basically the health of your people or give you certain bonuses. Like if you throw a feast, then everybody's fed. You know, you don't have to worry about food. Um, this game like fully embraces its theme. It's actually a little difficult to get into because all the mechanics in the game are themed. So like like I said, there's literally like devotion, faith, rituals, sermon, uh, loyalty, inspiration, re-education. So it takes a little bit to get used to it to be like, oh, that's my skill tree. That's my experience. You know, that's, that's the health of people. They don't actually have health. They just have loyalty. Um, but once you get used to that, man, it's great in that theme because the game looks fantastic. It kind of looks like a more stylish version of don't starve. And so even when you're just like preaching a sermon, there's like little cartoon stuff going on. Um, there's like weird little, like, uh, it's not quite animal crossing type voicing. (laughs) There's a little bit of that, but it's also different depending on the follower type. <laughs> so, yeah, like that, that's Sorry. the old gods. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you do these voices well? Is it, is it actually it's, you in the game? <laughs> yeah. It's it's like it's it's just like that. Like, it's fantastic. It's very cute, but also kind of dark and disturbing. Like um, if one of your followers dies, let's say from old age or from like food poisoning or whatever, you go to their body and the two options are like prepare for burial and harvest meat. And like... <laughs> And each one has options like if you prepare for burial, then you can like put them in a funeral and people will go pray and they'll give you devotion or harvest meat is literally just like, no, I need meat resources now and I'm going to feed that to my people. And they it may reduce my faith a little bit, but it's going to get it's going to keep them alive. So so there is like there's like good religious practices and bad religious practices and you're kind of bouncing back between them. Um, the combat itself is pretty fun. Uh, the good news is like a successful run takes you less than 11, 12 minutes. So so you're just oh, like, I'm nice. going to go hop in the dungeon real quick, do a quick run, come out of it. Even if you die, you get to keep like two-thirds of the resources you found. There's some other areas, like there's like a fishing part and all this stuff. It's just, it's just got a lot of fun in it. Uh, I think my only problems with it are that 
The combat variety isn't isn't great. I think we've been spoiled by things like uh, Slay the Spire and Hades, where there's enough variety in each run. But the problem with Cult of the Lamb is that there's only like when you start the run, you get a weapon and a curse, which is uh, basically your special attack. So they don't provide you a choice at the start. As you go through the run, you'll get more choices. But the problem is that of the like four or five weapons, there's like a hammer, an axe, a sword, a dagger, a claw. There may be one or two more than that. Like some of them just suck. Like like the claws, the claws do like a little bit of damage, a little bit of damage, a little bit of damage, and then lots of damage. But there's some enemies that you don't have time to build up that combo because they'll attack you more quickly than that. And then like on the other end, there's the hammer, which does a lot of damage, but it's literally like, uh, uh, boom, you know? So it's it's, the problem is that I'm not saying that there's like one weapon type that I want to play. Like I love the idea of variety in the weapons, but not all the weapons are firing on all cylinders, which is frustrating when you start a run. You're just like, okay, I guess I'm stuck with this guy. Let's see how I do. Uh, yeah. But the combat's not that difficult. It's 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 punishing in that like you can't dick around. You'll get hurt. But as somebody who's not that great at video games, like every time I die, I'm like, that's my fault. But I'm also making my way through runs because I'm like, as long as I slow down and I pay attention a little bit, take it a little bit more seriously, understand the boss fight, then like get a hit or two and then back off, stuff like that. You're, you're going to I don't want to say you'll breeze through it, but you'll be fine, um, especially because as you're as you're unlocking in the cult, like like at the beginning of the game, when I start a run, I had a level one weapon. But because of upgrades I've gotten through maintaining my cult and my followers and getting devotion and faith, etc. Now, when I start a run, I have a level nine weapon waiting for me. So I'm just like doing much more damage and stuff like right off the start because my cult has allowed me to unlock that stuff. Um End of the day, man, this game is fantastic. I think I paid 20 or 25 bucks for it. It's really, really good. It's going on the game of the year list. Like, just no doubt. Wow. I played, oh, boy. I played like eight or nine hours of it. I think I'm about 75% of the way through. And I just, it's just, it's one of those games where you sit down, you play a little bit, and you're like, okay, let me let me take care of the crops. Oh, yeah, yeah let me go build an outhouse. Oh, oh, this guy died. Let me bury him. Okay, let me go do a run. Oh, I got this stuff in the run. And you just, two, three hours go by. Uh, it's fantastic. It's on PC and Xbox and PlayStation and Switch, I believe. It's not on Game Pass, but that's fine. It's worth 25 bucks. It's fantastic. Where are, are you playing it? it? Playing it on the Xbox because uh, I just felt like I needed a couch game. And also, it's definitely a controller game. I don't yeah. know that I would play mm-hmm. it on uh, mouse and keyboard. Um, The other game that I've been playing, I played about 20 minutes of it, is Roller Drome. Folks, it came out. The rhythm game. Will, tell me about Roller Drome. I know you're excited for this. I'm excited for Roller Drome. Why am I telling you about it? You're the one who played because it. You're, because I've been talking for six minutes straight. But okay, let me rephrase it. Hey, Will, do you remember you remember Roll, Roller Drome from E3? No. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, it is a game where... It's a game that was on Twitter six years ago. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Anyways, you have roller skates, you have guns... You're basically Tony Hawking around all these enemies and shooting them. Cell shaded, realistic. Cell shaded looks it's really per- pretty. Um, oh, looks this like is the game. Well. This is the game that I said looked like Sable. It's yes. got that like yes. Sable art style. Oh, Similar okay, art style, okay. a little bit more realistic on it, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So basically, it's it's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater meets Max Payne. Um, so you have these levels. You have certain goals in the level. I mean, the main goal is kill the guys. Uh, then you have other goals like, hey, kill this guy this way, you know, collect this, do this type of trick, etc. Um, and basically the way it works is that it's really nice. You tap forward on the analog stick and let it go and you're going to keep going until you stop. So you don't have to hold down analog mm-hmm. stick or anything. Um, basically, you do tricks to reload your ammo and then you shoot guys. And there's like a slowdown. So when you hold uh, left trigger to like aim, it like slows down and then you can you have like a little Max Payne type like slowdown timer. So basically you're just running around. You're like, pew, slow down, boom, 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 pop the guy. OK, go back to it. Oh, my ammo's out. Let me hop over here, do some tricks. It it, it all feels very good. Um, it, the combat is like very clean. Everything telegraphs well, like snipers. When they're aiming at you, there's a red and then it briefly turns to white and then you get shot. So like you have a dodge button, you just wait till it goes white and then you dodge and then you're doing all these tricks and stuff. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and and I've only seen a little bit of the 
like world building in the story. And it seems mm-hmm. pretty interesting. Like you walk around a locker room a little bit. Um, again, kind of cool, bad. I, I only played about 20 minutes of the game. And the reason why is because there is an hour long trial, I believe for PlayStation plus premium members, you get an hour long free trial of this game. However, there's some bug where it really only gives you 35 minutes. So I played like 20, wow. 25 minutes and then I was like 10 minutes left and I'm like, yeah, OK, um, I'm not going to play more of it now because I'd have to buy it and I'm going on vacation soon, not going to have time to play it. And the other thing is, honestly, it feels a bit one note like it is. It is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater meets Max Payne and that's it. So if you're into either of those things, hell yeah, have a good time. But just playing the couple of levels I did, I was like, honestly, nothing against Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. It's fun to play, but I'm not a big fan of that style of game of like, here's an arena, play it over and over to get these goals. Next one. And it's weird. It's just nothing against the game, but it's not doing it for me. So I don't know if you got PlayStation Plus premium or whatever tier it is, definitely give it a shot. I think it's 20 bucks, 20, 25 bucks. Maybe give it a shot anyways. It's really cool. It's just one of those like heartbreaking things where like I love the way this game looks. I was excited yeah. for it and I played it, but it ain't scratching my itch, you know? It ain't itching that bitch. That, that kind of sucks. Uh, I, wanted to look, I wanted to play it. Yeah, I definitely like the style of it. Like just looking at the some of the gameplay yeah. stuff that's put out. Like it looks, it looks like I would like it, but I... I don't Again. know. I don't know if it would get old yeah. after like 20 minutes or so. So, yeah, yeah. I might try nothing wrong with a game. Nothing wrong with the game. It's just my experience with it. It's not doing it for me. That's yeah. all. Damn. Oh, you heard of that. Put it on the box, everybody. Not doing it for Ian Gibson. Uh, speaking of Ian Gibson, not Kyle, itching my bitch. Will Crosby. Don't itch my bitch. Are you writing that down for a T-shirt? <laughs> Some no, pixels, it's don't very it, offensive. I, it's very <laughs> offensive. How is that offensive? I don't want you walking up to my bitch and itching her. <laughs> okay, we gotta stop saying it. My <laughs> games that I've played this past week, um, I I can't really say that I've played played them. This is more just benchmarking for my new computer setup. Um, Hitman wow. Two, I played through the Miami level because that's that's what the benchmark is. But I wanted to actually play it. Runs great. Also, that game is super fun. That level is awesome. Every time I play it, I find something new. I dig it. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 is just the new, like, punish your computer by, you know, playing this year's version of Crisis. It runs way better than it used to. Obviously, I have uh, six more cores now than I did before. So uh, I got like a 30% to 40% bump in FPS. It, It looks pretty good. Game's still buggy, still doesn't work. I think they've basically <laughs> just given up on it because they haven't patched it at all. It's been like five months since the last patch <sighs> or some some ridiculous Jesus. thing. I don't I'm not even keeping track of it anymore, so that might not be accurate. But don't play that game unless play it for the story if you really, really want it, because the story is the best part about it. But like everything else is just is not great. Uh Red Dead Redemption 2 flawless looks gorgeous um the use dlss when you play that game because it really really helps uh if you don't then the anti-aliasing in that game is like atrociously tough on your on your gpu and then i restarted elden ring because my friend al was like hey it's been like however many months since you last played elden ring and you've only played through it once uh super fun again that game ran smoothly on my old computer and i guess it just runs more smoothly now um it's great. It's super fun. I've been having a lot of fun with uh, I'm trying to I'm, we're going to try out a mod that uh, it's endless co-op throughout yeah, the entire yeah. game where it you don't fixes the co-op. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're, we're going to we're going to try that because that was that was the least favorite thing about my experience I, was. I just want to say I got to say this. I'm a little upset because we had a very long discussion about this in your position. Kyle was that there was nothing wrong with the co-op. In, well, okay. In Elden Ring. <laughs> there, no, no, no. I didn't. I didn't have a problem with the way that they implemented it. My problem was with the barriers that they put, like the physical barriers that they put up in. Like, I don't. I don't mind that you have to put down a sign or anything. Like that. That's still fine. Um, my my issue was that it it locks certain things. Like if you beat a boss of an area and it's the last boss, mm-hmm. you can't call your friend back to that area. Like that's stupid. That's oh, yeah, yeah. that's really really dumb. This mod fixes that. So 
Um, my position hasn't changed, but I do like the fact that someone just went, hey, this is really what if stupid. We fix all We're this gonna broken design. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, um, uh, Kyle, if you play that, let me know because I have it on PC. Um, oh, okay. Uh, What's sweet. the? Uh, is it up to four? I feel like I saw a screenshot four. with four. I think people. you can yeah. do four. Yeah, that would be pretty That's sick cool. if we do that. Yeah, I, I have yeah, to download the mod from Nexus Mod. <clears throat> I want to get some some practice back in before I try to finish it on my Xbox again. And I was like, oh, I'll mm -hmm. play it on PC, and like because I haven't played it that much because i was just recording stuff for work um so yeah i would totally do that uh cool i i am down you you me and whoever else wants to jump on we should all we should all try and get a, a party together and beat the crap out of some godskin warriors Piece whatever they're called shit. um I, I was gonna say i did um i was recording some mods in spider-man uh on pc and i was genuinely i forgot to bring this up i was genuinely surprised how well it just runs out of the box from steam mm. uh on pc it wow. looks fantastic um runs great look uh, i don't mean to poo poo but that's a that's a ps4 title like that game is how old four or five years old now it's an yeah, old game but it's it's also the remastered ps5 uh ray tracing all yeah. 4k was that remaster PS5 only? I believe so, yeah. 2018. For, for, the, for the ray tracing stuff. I don't yeah, think the, you ray can do the ray tracing. On. Anyways. Uh, no, no, I, you can. But. I thought it worked really well. Uh, and it made me... I never <laughs> got very far in Spider-Man. It made me want to play Spider-Man, uh, which... I think it's I might a, do... It's like know. a solid, solid think, seven or eight. I think Karen you made know, it. I give it like an 8.5, just because they finally nailed the web swinging and yeah that's a good point there's there's something i i don't know what it is but there are some games that just a mechanic feels so good that it never gets old like it's the same thing with like fallout like i love the what is it called the i haven't played it in forever the bats system the, bats. the bats bats oh i love uh, bats. bats like something about it is like it just never gets old it's the same thing with the web swinging for me so there are parts of the of spider-man that just could be changed or or lessened but the web swinging just never gets old and since that's the main part of the game it makes it more fun to play yeah it's I, I i would not say you have to beat the game i beat the game just because i wanted to keep playing the game so it's yeah. one of those where it's like I, don't care about the story but if you want to play it just keep playing it you know it i don't think i did any of the dlc though so does I the remaster come with, come with dlc Morales. yeah me neither um, oh, I believe Miles Morales, so. man I, so here's my concern with Spider-Man 2. I dropped Miles Morales within like 90 minutes because Ooh. it's it's just more Spider-Man. And I was like, oh, I've already played like 25 hours of this game. And, and it was still like two or two year, two or three years later. But I was still like, oh, they've already stretched this enough. You know, yeah. so I'm worried yeah. that Spider-Man 2, if it's more the same, I'm already kind of out, honestly. The thing about Miles Morales that always piqued my interest is the fact that Jeff Gersman finished it. And he was like, really enjoyed it and really liked it. And I was like, that's yeah. wild to me. Uh, I don't think it's bad. I think it was just there wasn't enough uniqueness there for yeah. me to view I, it as a as another game. I don't what, remember uh, how much I played of of Spider Man. What mods did you download and try? Did you uh, download the No Pride Flag mod? Yeah, obviously, oh, it's it's built in. get those Xbox. out of there. Um, <laughs> it's built in. You know, I that happened. I watched that happen in real time because I was downloading mods to record while that was happening. And yeah. I like refreshed the front page and it like had this article. And I was like, oh, an article about Spider Man mods and like yeah. read it. And I was like, oh, what is happening? And yeah. I look over the news slack for work and they're like all talking about it and everything. I was like, what is happening right now? When I, when know, I starting... read that it was, it's, it's just I, the region I do, thing, right? I do, but it also, it also sounds like. New York Times article referencing a tweet and you go to the tweet and it's like a, somebody with like three followers and one like on the tweet. And you're just like, so you pulled shit out of midair. Like, yeah, sure, it exists. But is it worth a news story? You know? Yeah, I, I just it was crazy to see them just be like, hey, fuck off. Like, don't do this sort of shit. Either. Also, yeah. I, um, I really like their their message. Like, yeah, I kind of I kind of prefer when companies are just like blunt and they're like, fuck you. Like, and they also backed it up off. really well. They're yeah. like, hey, this guy broke the rules 
and we don't agree yeah. with what he's saying, take that stuff yeah. somewhere else. Wait, how did he? How did he break the rules though? He, he made a fake account. Yeah, right? he made a second account oh. to upload it, so he was circumventing a ban. Gotcha. Um, okay, is there technicality? Um, but I, I downloaded a bunch of skins that are hilariously funny because they do not fit Spider-Man properly at all. Um, I turned all the pigeons into slices of pizza, which was great. <laughs> And I do they, uh, do they flap still? No, they're just slices of pizza that oh, zoom okay. around. <laughs> and then um, I was Uncle Ben's gravestone for a bit, <laughs> and um, I fucked it up hard Jesus. enough that I had to reinstall the sixty gigabyte game because I would start a new game. Uh, my head, w I would wake up as Stan Lee, and then by the time I went to go put my mask on, I was putting the mask over Fisk. Uh, Wilson Fisk's head and then underneath mm -hmm. him was the the gravestone and then the gravestone would jump out the window and start swinging <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly the the uh, the modding process is super simple you download a tool and then you just lead it to the asset folder unpack the assets and then it has a little install mod the thing that you run into with the spider-man specifically is you need to uninstall the mods before you add a new one or else it'll do exactly what it did to me. Um, but it was pretty wild. Mm -hmm. uh, all that stuff. Uh, it's just cool to see this community come up so fast, especially with God of War. There was like not that much. Um, I, like there was some good mods, but there wasn't that much. And then this game, it's like every nerd is like, I want this suit from the specific comic book. Cause there's just pages of normal Spider-Man suits oh, yeah, with yeah, just yeah. tiny color differences. <laughs> yes. And yes. They like, look identical. I know. I'm like, yeah. these aren't cool. Give me the weird shit. And yeah. like one of the, yeah, it was just, it's funny and weird at the same time, but nerds are nerds. So. Uh, I just forgot to mention that I, I had played that a bunch today and I was surprised like how quick out of the box. I mean, Nix's is good. The, that got a war one ran great too. Again, it's PS4 um, game. So that's great. Anyways, it's time for the news folks, which means it's time to play the news theme. Which means it's time for me to hit this button right here. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up news? But now there's more to the song so you can sing along and it won't bore you though Unlike Factorio Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean But we don't want to have a vocal spat So let's bring it back to your local chat Folks, how would you like to be embraced right now? How would you like me to embrace you in your home? asked i this look we need to talk about this because the most insane part of this this being embracer group acquiring the lord of the rings and the hobbit ip as well as bitwave games geotech limited run games syntrix tetsujin tripwire interactive and tuxedo labs is that they announced them all at once in successive press releases. And it was insane. I don't know if you guys had this experience, but I woke up this morning and I checked Twitter and I saw somebody saying like, I don't know how I feel about uh, Embracer owning limited run games. And then somebody else was like, whoa, Embracer owns Lord of the Rings now? And I was like, somebody's got their wires crossed. It can't be both. <laughs> and then I scroll down and it's just a thread of Wario 64. And every single tweet is just like embracer group acquires blank. And then there's the press release. And it was just like six or seven of them. Like this is the, Hey, you know what? We may not be able to acquire Activision, but you know what? We're going to do the shotgun effect and we're going to get a whole lot of studios out of this. This is insane, right? It's wild. Um, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, so starting from the top, Embracer Group enters into agreement to acquire IP rights to Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit literary works by J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, they have, they're going to acquire Middle Earth Enterprises, which uh, owns a vast intellectual property catalog and worldwide rights to motion pictures, video games, board games, merchandising, theme parks, and stage productions related to the iconic fantasy literary works, Lord of the Rings, Hobbit. Um, as well as matching rights to the Middle Earth related literary works authorized by the Tolkien Estate and HarperCollins, which have yet to be explored. Uh, they do not own the rights to the books, obviously, uh, or they don't own like publishing rights to the books. That's still HarperCollins. They don't make broad decisions. That's still the Tolkien Estate. Doesn't affect Amazon at all. Amazon's business is directly with the Tolkien Estate. 
Uh, I only noticed because yeah. I was like reading a bunch of discussion stuff on it. Um, I found this very funny because recently I've gotten into uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, their Middle Earth battle strategy game from Games Workshop. And their Games Workshop is gearing up to release a bunch of st- things. But from what I can tell, like Games Workshop obviously licenses it out from someone. I don't know who specifically. So they're not in any danger of just it getting stripped away. But people are wondering, Embracer owns Fantasy Fight Flight games. They own Atomic um, something else. So a lot of people are, are wondering if they're going, once that license expires, the Games Workshop, which I think is like 28 or something, 2028, if they're going to revert back and uh, and start um, making their own board games and miniatures and stuff. Um, but what I want to ask you two, <sighs> because this is a video game podcast, what Lord of the Rings themed video game genre, st- basic story? What do you want? I want a Lord of the Rings Dwarf Fortress meets The Sims. Give me a people management, a little bit more on the comedic weird side, where. I am maintaining, uh, you know, my own little establishment. Uh, honestly, I was going to say it needs to be this, but honestly, anywhere on this spectrum between Sims, where you're managing a very small group of people or like Dwarf Fortress style, all the way up to like Civilization, where you are basically playing Civ, but it's in the Lord of the Rings universe and, and lots of styling on that. Um, or even just like right in the middle, make it a banished Lord of the Rings. Like I want to, I think what I really liked about Lord of the Rings was that it clearly establishes all these different factions. And even the ones that feel like they're the same are not because there's major political or personal differences between them or historical differences. And I would love to grab one of those groups and guide them or better yet, create my own group amongst them and guide them through the ages. Kyle. I would love like a turn-based strategy Lord of the Rings game. A la like something like Fire Emblem. Um, I I love fire. You guys know how much I love Fire Emblem, but like I would love to do something like that in the world of Lord of the Rings with a nicely written story to go along with it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Maybe in like the first or second age, that would be sick. Um, I would also like to see. I mean, Shadow of Mordor kind of already did this, but like a I want like a stealth. Like some sort of stealthy kind of thing. Oh, Gollum. But not that. <laughs> but not but not that game. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Because that yeah. game looks like garbage. Um I don't yeah. know if you've ever played it. The third age, which I think came out on Yes. I, I did play that okay. game. I played that's, it on I my know that's turn based a little bit, but I don't think it's exactly Fire Emblem. I did I play it on my GameCube? I'm trying to remember what, what systems that came out for, but I do remember um, playing that and it was like I got to a point where you could just kind of cheat your way through it. Like, like you became either too powerful or there were like certain items that you could get. And it wasn't difficult. You literally battle the eye of Sauron at the very end. Like okay. you're like, you're like fighting the eye of Sauron. Oh, so, um, I, it was fun. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind another, uh, battle for middle earth. Uh, RTS. I really, I think two is the one I played a bunch. Um, oh man. I wonder if I could load that up. That's a great game. Uh, Which that, that, that was an art that was an RTS. Yeah, well, there's two. That, that there's two of them. Yes, yes, but it's but it's more Warcraft, right? Because don't you have heroes? Um, I think like so. you have your units, but you also have heroes. It's more it's that m- that that era of Lord of the Rings games. The titles and the games just are all crazy. blend together. It's so hard to keep them apart. Um, I would not mind a more modern. Uh, this is a case where I would want a a redesigned game. Where in Battlefront, they should have just kept making great Battlefront games. But Lord of the Rings Conquest was not that great of a game. Uh, it had issues. It They, like, directly made Battlefront into that, and it just wasn't great. So I think a really good Lord of the Rings Conquest Battlefront game would be fun. Uh, fighting the battles at those different locations. Pie in the Sky, open world, Middle Earth game. Um, and then... Other than that, I think just like a game going through the books would be fun. Like not yeah. necessarily based off the movies. Um, may, I mean, they could be based off the movies. There were only two movie games. The first one never became a game. 
Uh, and Return of there the King. are games, but they're they're um... Re- Return of the King is surprisingly solid and really really fun. The, I love that game. The first time I realized I was better at video games than other people, uh, not like crazy, but like that I was good at video oh, games. Oh, I'm so shit. tired. You know what the fuck I mean. <laughs> Uh, I was just thinking the other day how you're like, you know what? I think I'm genuinely good at Smash Brothers, which is like everybody says that. Everybody says that. Okay. Anyways, I, uh, I like there's a tournament and I almost entered because I thought I would win it. <laughs> These are all will quotes. <laughs> that is not a will quote. First of all, I said this about Mario quote. Kart. Second of all, I said I was better than the average person at Smash Brothers. Uh, third of all, you're a fucking idiot. And fourth of all, I was making fun of you the other day because you didn't know Bob's Burgers had songs in it. Moving on. Um, what? You didn't I know that. barely watched it. Oh, oh okay. But we were, we were watching the But it's also, this is not to defend myself. I, I, like, I knew there were song segments in it, but it's not like a song per episode type of show, right? There's almost always Maybe, a song yeah. on the credits. I mean, uh, in the credits, yeah, the credits yeah. don't count. Credits don't. Count. That's just like a gag. Like, but there's not like a minimum one song scene per episode, right? I feel like it's it's at least half of the mochi's yeah, biting like my monitor. At least monitor. every other. Yeah, that's fair. Like, there's like, a lot of songs. And they're, yeah. they're, like, they're like tiny songs. They're not like full yeah. orchestra like the movie was. No, but. yeah. I have those movies. I watched the movie again yesterday. Uh, it's, it's so good. Oh, it's so it's good. delightful. Lucky Ducks, great song. Um, so, anyways, what I was saying is, I beat the. Tr- I think it was the trolls in um, uh, the two towers. Uh, you were playing as Aragorn, twin Gimli, towers. and oh uh, yeah, twin towers and Legolas, and uh, I beat them for my brother and his friend. And I was Le- like, Man. Legolas, Leg- Legolas, Lego, Legolas, Legolas, uh, Legolas. How is it? How is it pronounced? Is it Legolas? Legolas. I can't remember. Yeah, Legolas. I feel like I. So I. Uh, we're running no, long. On. Fuck it. Let's keep running long. I, so I finally read the books. I hated the movies, finally read the books in like 2012, really liked them. And then I went back with the 4k release and watched the movies and liked them. And then this past year, my dad read them, which is a little out of left field. It's not completely out of character for him, but he just started reading. Like he read all of Harry Potter and then he yeah. read the Hobbit and then he read Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, okay. And having him talk about it, I'm like, man, maybe I should go back and reread those. Yeah. But yeah, it's a great world. <laughs> uh, honestly, look, let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. There's a very easy path for them to be successful. And it's called Shadow of Mordor 3. It's very simple, right? Very simple. Just make that another game, bad game. It wasn't bad. The second one was only okay because it didn't improve enough on the first game but like there is enough there and there's been enough time that they can make a fantastic game because that nemesis system is still unmatched it is the best emergent open world gameplay system out there period someone just nobody modded, else has done it someone just modded that into skyrim i saw yeah like they modded That's the, the nemesis system I, into skyrim i Great. don't remember the nemesis system that well and I played it it's, last year. I feel like I, it had no effect on me throughout the game. Is it? But I mean, like, you know, you can catch the Pokemon in Pokemon, right? Yeah, but the Nemesis system, like, I feel like I wasn't dying, so it never made it like a thing. But you don't have to die because when you kill guys, sometimes they don't actually die and they come back and they're like, I'm here for revenge. I feel like not once in that first game I came across, I was like, oh, look, it's the guy I killed before. It's just more people. I, um, you're just completely wrong about this because everybody loves that system. Everybody was like, this is Everyone incredible. It, this is a revolution. talks about why they I, love it. They just say it's a great I, system. I don't because love it, that system. Because, because you build, when you build relationships. Someone, I want them to stay dead. I have no relationships <laughs> but, but it's not about that. It's about like. You build relationships and animosity with randos, with random NPCs that would just be fodder in any other game. And all of a sudden you're like, that guy with the weird hump on his back. You're like, that guy with the weird last name, he's back again. Or you're like, oh, he's my friend now. He's my friend now. Now he's my soldier. And like that combined with the mercenaries, like hierarchy, you know, kill your way to the top system. Like it's time. They did. They did one. Very good. They did the second one too soon, too much like the original, it's time for them to come back and do a fresh look at it. Anyways, uh, moving on here, Limited Run Games uh, was also acquired. Do we want to say anything about this? 
Just interesting. Uh, I like limited run games. No. They make cool stuff. Honestly, I hate them. It just They're takes stupid. forever. I got. I finally got their Scott Pilgrim Deluxe Pack that I I've been wanting for forever, and it's so it's awesome. It's so good. Remember when they got in trouble because they were like, "Hey, we're gonna release this game physical only and a certain number of copies," and everybody was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" <laughs> like, no, release it digital too, so people can normally play it. Don't create false scarcity. Do it. Make money. Um, on the Lord of the Rings front, uh, Private Division also announced a publishing partnership with Weta Workshop. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with Lord of the Rings, but what I did work on the Lord of the Rings films, which is uh, very interesting. I'm uh, oh, no, sorry. It does. Set yeah, the, the, I, I was going to no, say, I, I was didn't like, didn't I, didn't I put this story up? <laughs> um, yeah, because original... this came out. This came out before the IP acquisition. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I feel like the original tweet I saw never mentioned Lord of the Rings, so I thought they were doing. I, you had to actually, go into their into their release. Their I assumed they were doing that robot board game miniatures game <laughs> that they have. I thought they were going to do that. One. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which is actually pretty neat. Um, I don't. They have not published any video games. I know they make some AR and VR stuff, but I think this will be their first game. Uh, when I went to their website, it really didn't have a ton of information. Anyways, that's cool. I I wonder how any of that is affected by this um, IP right thing. But I kind of doubt it. Uh, and the probably final, just makes it cheaper for them. <laughs> true. You know? the, the final Embracer uh, AAA or final final Embracer story. Uh, supposedly, uh, a triple A project has switched studios. People uh, <coughs> ooh, getting emotional here are reporting that it is Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake was in serious trouble and has now switched studios and to continue uh, work on it. Um, what do you guys think? You think that's that's still going to happen? Are you excited for I, it? I could have told you that was going to happen because I had doubts about Aspire Media from the beginning. I I I had a relationship with them based on the fact that they gave me a digital key for Kotor because I sent them pictures of my physical copy from years ago, and I was like, "Hey, pretty cool company." But all they've done, as far as I can tell, all they've done the past like five, ten years is make ports. Like they just they just port stuff to the switch, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, we're gonna make a triple A remaster or re reimagining of Code Tour." And I was like, "Are you though? Like, are you capable of doing that?" And they hired uh, their lead writer, and then she left. So obviously that that spoke something about the structure internally of what happened. And then you know we we heard that it was basically dead in the dead in the water. Yeah, yeah, it was all her fault. Um, um. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. I hope it does, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, Saber Interactive. I, I I enjoy the games they directly develop. I've enjoyed. They made Evil Dead the game, World War Z. I actually really liked. Um, Snow Runner, Mud Runner, uh, are games Ooh. they published. Um, oh. And then uh, there's a lot of other stuff, but Saber Interactive. Uh, if anyone was going to make this, uh, it wouldn't be them, but I'm glad they are making it because they're ending up. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is good news to me just because that project basically was rumored to be just like dead. And I was afraid it was going to be perma dead because I cannot wait to play the KOTOR remake. That's how I'm going to experience the first game for the first time is in the, the remake. Um, and so this is news basically saying, Hey, the project's not dead. It's going to take a little bit longer. We're making a big change, but the project is still alive and that's good news. Oh, I'm sorry. They did make, sorry. I was reading this backwards. They were not the publisher. They were the, they developed snow runner and mud runner. Um, it, oh, this list is confusing. What if, because wait, what if it's just, what if it's just called star runner star and it's runner. just snow runner, but, but in the star Wars universe, like almost identical. It's just star Wars universe. I would be God, okay with that. that. This list is confusing. Cause it says games developed halo two, halo three, Halo 3 ODST, but they mean oh, the they ports just, for Windows yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But they did make, yeah, Snow Runner, World War Z, um, a lot of other stuff, so I, I'm into that. Uh, next up on the news docket. Uh, it, oh, this, I mean, we're not going to get too into this. I really highly recommend reading this. Um, I don't know if mm -hmm. either of you did. I read most of it. I did not. Uh, a little and bit. Then, uh, Nintendo of America's testers say they faced years of sexual harassment uh, awful, awful stuff um, coming out of this. Uh, like I said, it, it 
I don't want to really recap it here. The author does a fantastic job talking through this with replaced names. Just the culture that was kind of developing there at Nintendo of all places. It's also mostly at a subsidiary um, contract place uh, for QA for Nintendo of America um, as well. So there's several different stories in here, several different people. They call out people by name, like the abusers and stuff, which is good. I mean, good on them. Good um, for them. This stuff is it's crazy. Um, someone I, I was uh, Halucha and I were talking about this in the Discord chat, but this guy, one of the guys, w- posted uh, or people actually no, I think it was a guy posted the va- you know the famous Vaporeon uh, sex meme like posted that in a work slack meme channel and i was like saying to myself i was like i don't even think i would post that in the subpixel discord just because it's kind of gross and ha- like i would post it if like it was being talked about or something like oh do you remember this meme it's just like at work can you imagine someone sending something like that it's just like mm-hmm. i'm surprised i mean yeah, that's woof. there's a lot of there's some years in here and, and a lot of this stuff obviously it was 20 some of it was 2012 13 before the big like movements about all this stuff so like half reading this article i'm like go tell someone tweet about it like there's so many things but i think a lot of this stuff is obviously older they're just coming out about it now because there's a lot of um, force behind it and it's like you always think of the activisions and the riots and you're like clean up your act get this together but it it happens everywhere and people ignore it and it's shitty and it needs to stop um because it sucks and and these were people's dream jobs yeah and some of these quotes are really really heartbreaking just about how like the the, i'm just reading through like the beginning part but the one woman was like i grew up with nintendo like it was my dream to work here and now there's this like stain on on the memory for her it's really terrible yeah fuck them yeah don't meet your heroes, don't work your dream jobs, apparently. Um, get better heroes and better dream jobs. No, I'm kidding. This place should not be like this. Uh, next up, uh, any, anyone know more about this than I do? Just Cause, Iron Man game? Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about it. Uh, just in a uh, interview, I believe, with Min Max, uh, Avalanche Studios co-founder, Avalanche Studios, the studio mostly known for just cause series kind of dropped a bit of a bombshell that is a bit of a goosh sploosh like this game would have been incredible like when you talk about dream games the studio that made just cause spent nearly two years working on an iron man game yeah let me say that again just cause but it's an iron man game i'm in like 110 yep. percent right yep. there like, cause, cause that's basically what just cause is. It's a giant playground. You have, you know, tethers, et cetera, hijacking vehicles. Just do that, but replace some of it with an Iron Man suit. And it was, it was sandbox. You're flying around having fun. Like that's, that's incredible problem. However, the reason why it was canceled is because Disney wanted the game made fast. And, uh, honestly it's, it, you know, as somebody coming from software development, th- this is actually a happy, happy story. Because basically the studio Avalanche and the leaders, they looked at this and they said, look, in order for us to meet this deadline, quote, we would have had to hire 70 to 80 people to the team that I would have had a responsibility to find a new project for. It would have broken the studio completely. So Mm -hmm. basically in order for them to meet this timeline, they would have had to drastically change the studio, hire a whole bunch of people theoretically just for this project because they then couldn't turn around and justify having that many people on board. And so they said, you know what, we're not going to do that. That's too big of a risk and it's too mean to our employees. And so they pushed back and the deal fell through with Disney, um, which is a shame because this game would have been fantastic. Like zero, like 110% this game. There's no doubt this game would have been fantastic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It would have been awesome. I mean, you're essentially all the things you can do in just cause are things the Iron Man suit can do without having to explain it as a wingsuit, you know? Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like this, just 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 cause games are great. Iron Man's a perfect fit for it. Fuck Disney. Like, fuck you and your greed for the reason of trying to basically crush the studio into making some IP game for you. Like, you should have just given it to them and walked away and said, we trust you, get it done. And and that's that's all, that's all you need to do. Yeah. I hope the next Just Cause 
Rico just has like a suit, mech suit that he <laughs> invented awesome. called yeah. Tin Boy. Uh, you know, it's funny. Better. He got he got kind of close to that because in three or four, he has those thrusters that you can stick to people yes, four. and fire them. Oh. So it's not it's not thrusters in your hands. It's thrusters on other people's bodies. But <laughs> it's like they, they're starting to add that stuff in there and good for them. Oh, I love Just Cause. Um, moving on to the more middling news of the week. Uh, we'll kind of go through this fast because I know it is a little late. Um, there's an official D and D virtual tabletop system being developed for unreal engine five. That cool. sounds yeah. absolutely yeah. cool. Um, yeah. I, I, when I read this, I was like, Oh yeah. Why haven't they done this yet? Because basically like roll 20 and some other systems and tabletop simulator are kind of, I don't want to say they're eating their lunch, but like they they are subsisting on the popularity of D&D to an extent. Yeah. And um, like they did with with D&D Beyond, which was not actually owned by them, but they recently acquired them, um, which is a great system to basically just digitize all your character sheets, et cetera, and keep track of all that stuff and dice rolls like this is the next step. The only thing is. Unreal Engine 5. Now, look, I know Epic has done a lot of work with Unreal Engine to make it so that, you know, you can kind of play that in a lot of different places, like with Fortnite, etc. That being said, like the people that I play D&D with, they're literally running on like $200 10-year-old laptops. And they're just barely getting Roll20 to log in. They're not going to be able to run this. So it's kind of weird. It's like you could make this work, but it would really just be like maybe some people in there and then maybe one person having to screen share to the other. So I, I really, I'm not sure they're making the right decision with the engine. This almost needs to be just a super dumb browser based engine. Just, just yeah. make a better roll 20. Cause quite frankly, roll 20 is not that good. So just make a better version of it. It's, it's really not. And I know, I know yeah. the community manager of roll 20 and I, I'm not ashamed to say That's that. fine. It's, it's not so, his fault. It's, it's so clunky. Like <laughs> yeah. it's just, yeah. it's so clunky. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's wild. Uh, I like D&D. &D. That um, Foundry VTT we were using for... Um, yeah, that was good. That was good. Uh, I like that. Um, it's funny. I, this reminded me, they, they also announced, uh, speaking of back to Lord of the Rings, they announced Lord of the Rings Doctor Who and Warhammer crossovers with magic cards. And I was like, I don't like magic cards oh. at all, but some of the art for the Lord of the Rings, I was like, oh man, I would buy. It was just art. like, they're they like, it's art. like 13 cards and it's one booster pack. That's it, its own thing. And I was like, I would yeah. buy that. So I don't end up with shitty magic cards. Um, moving on. Yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes they release that art in high res. So you yeah. could just do that and get a print. Yeah, that's smart. Um, the game Karen started last week, Death Stranding, is supposedly coming to PC Game Pass tomorrow. PC I thought you meant the Xbox Nintendo DS. Game Pass. Yes. I wish the Nintendo yes. DS was <laughs> coming <laughs> to PC Game Pass. Kyle, let me tell you, you can play the DS on your computer already. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I have been playing around with it this week. Um, <laughs> this is from Tom Henderson, as well as other... Um, notable uh reporters leakers uh and they, and they teased it they teased it this morning game pass kept changing their profile picture on social media networks to basically have death stranding art in it oh i did not know that thank that's you cool. for telling me that um that's I, uh, look, i'm just gonna say this 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 is cool but it would have been a lot cooler if it was coming to xbox that's the bigger story oh yeah okay. and so i'm like Go my microphone Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm like, so I'm like, cool, cool. That's coming to Game Pass, but I feel a little let down. What if it comes to Xbox? Oof. Well, I mean, they didn't. Do Xbox you, didn't tease PC only. They're just changing their profile picture. Yes, but I think Henderson said PC. Yeah, he says PC, but he could be wrong. He could be wrong, but also, man, I wonder what that exclusivity deal is that PlayStation had for. For, for console publishing. Yeah. Um, Probably in perpetuity, I would guess. Uh, let me quick five, hit the rest years. of these um, for y'all. Elden Ring hit 16.6 million copies as of June 20, 2022. Um, sold. That is incredible. Great game. Good for from. Uh, Helldivers 2 trailer leaks. Uh, and I believe this further confirms the GeForce Now leak. Ring the bell, yes. Ian. 
Ring ding, the ding, bell. Ding, 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 ding. The next time we have a slow episode, we need to go back to the GeForce Now list and and just see what else is on there we can get excited about. Yeah, I love getting excited with you boys. Uh, Dead Island 2 out of nowhere uh, with a release date, I believe. Or this or well, wasn't this release date. I'm trying to remember. Wasn't this announced like four or five years ago and then it just went quiet? And then, yes, I think Amazon, Amazon accidentally posted like, here's the game. Here's like yeah. a release date. And here's like the images and everything from it. Dead Island 2 uh, is a meme trailer. Uh, if you remember, Goat Simulator 3 this year during E3 yes, made, yes, fun made fun of the trailer. Uh, I'm trying to see when the original Dead Island 2 trailer was posted. Um, um, I'll, I'll hit the next. Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's been out there for a while. while. I, I'm ready for this, honestly, because Dying Light seems like a lot of fun, but it also seems a bit too serious for me. And Dead Island was was fun. I didn't play a lot of it, but it's it's just a fun little action action RPG open world zombie game. Like cool. If it, yeah. If it has the same co-op. The Dying Light 1 co-op was so much fun. Um <laughs> and that I hope Dead Island 2 has that same co-op cuz I, I had a blast yeah. with that. Um finishing up here, Hogwarts Legacy was delayed <laughs> from holiday 2022 uh to February 10th, 2023 with an official release date now. Man, that okay. is that's a shame because that was one of the very few big hits left oh, to come out in 2022. There's just not a lot of stuff left. We just got raided by 22 people. Hurry up. Let's finish the episode. Oh. Dear God. <laughs> um, another quick hit here. I I'm excited for that Hogwarts legacy. Uh, troubled yeah. uh, creator aside. Um, I think it'll be really cool to inhabit that world. It's funny. I'm the opposite. Like I'm not a big Harry Potter <laughs> fan, but I love. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, game looks great, though. It really does. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a Disney and Marvel game showcase the day after my birthday. Who cares? Uh, Team Asobi, who made the incredible Astro Bot, says they, they uh, right? Yeah. We want our games to feel like they're made in Japan. Hey, you're doing a great job. Well, I just want to say the the I I should have corrected the headline here. In this article, they say we're already working on our new game. It's our biggest one yet. Um, so I'm very excited. I mean, they've had two knockout hits so far. Oh, yeah. Bring on the third. Bring on the third, baby. Uh, and then there's a THQ Nordic or there was a THQ Nordic showcase. Um, I'm trying to go. Who here. Uh, I don't Alone think there was much. Out there's of it, a new Alone there. in the Dark that's coming out space uh, based off the original Alone in the Dark, not the crappy reboot. Uh, Recreation. Actually looked kind of cool. It was like a burnout Ooh, yeah. uh, type game. New SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, SpongeBob. And um, that's about it. Yeah. Folks, if you want to see our hot, hot content, you can go to subpixelfilms.com and you can go to that link tree that is recently updated and check it out. Folks, we rebranded today. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, you can see. Like, I don't mean to Disney steal your thunder, logo. but we also released a brand new episode of Pixel 8 God. where we ventured north into Montreal. It's a fantastic episode because it was a fantastic trip. Go check it out on YouTube. It was a fantastic trip. I had a blast. Um, folks, if you want any of our content, that link tree. Actually, I don't know if it does. Our YouTube channel has a link to the merch site. <laughs> you need uh, to update our link tree. <laughs> I think I need to put yeah. that in the link tree. Uh, Redbubble, search for Subpixel. You can buy our stuff. It's Redbubble. It's the quality it is, but the logo is the best quality out there. Uh, so if you yeah. want to support us, feel free to do that. Um, buy some merch. The stickers are actually... The stickers are really good. I bought a sticker just of this. Magnet. I just got a magnet. Magnets are good. I bought a sticker yeah. of that. So they look great. Yeah. Um, definitely buy those. Um, what's going on this weekend? Saturday night, I'm streaming, I think. No, fuck off. I'm streaming on Saturday. Oh, you are. Uh, not you sure are, what, sure. but I'll, I'll definitely uh, check our Twitter. I'll have it posted on there. We'll just have a little fun chill with a brand new stream overlay we'll be revealing. Woo! Awesome. T timed with a rebrand, so look forward to that. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Hunt270. You can find the man below me on Twitter at Think Gibson. You can find the man next to him on Twitter at Kyle of the Beard. All of our content at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Instagram, everything. Folks, thank you for watching, and we will see you all next week.